So let's talk about how to configure a TCP IP on a Windows host. Now I've got Packet Tracer, but we're not going to use it. We're going to use my physical uh, PC for this. And this will be a lot of review for most of you, but there might be a couple of things with some of the IP config commands that might be a little bit new. But just by way of review, <clears throat> remember that we configure TCP IP on Windows host from the Network and Sharing Center. So I'm going to right click on my internet connection or my network connection. I'm going to click on Open Internet uh, Network and Internet Settings. And there's about six ways you can get here from Windows, but basically you come to this point where you go to your change adapter settings. Now, because I'm currently on this network, uh, I don't want to play with it. So I'm going to go to the one that's not connected, my Ethernet. Right click and go to Properties. And from Properties, I want to click on my TCP IP, so Internet Protocol Version 4, or TCP IP v4, and make sure that it's checked, and it should be by default. And we'll click Properties. Now, here's where we'll set the IP address. We can obtain an IP address automatically, use the following IP addresses, obtain the DNS server, or use following. So if I want to specify, then I'd choose this, and I'd put in the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. If I say obtain automatically, then I'm trusting a DHCP server to give me my IP configuration. Now, notice that when I change this back to obtain an IP address automatically, my DNS server does not. Uh, so I need to manually select that one again to move it back. Now, you do have the option for an alternate configuration, and this is something that if you're bouncing from one network to another, you might have an issue with. So if I have, let's say I have DHCP on one network, then I have this set. But if I go to another network that doesn't have DHCP, that's where I'd set my alternate configuration. Um, and if my... Uh, if I'm on the other network without my DHCP server being active, then it would use this alternate configuration. Kind of a cool little thing, but not something we actually deal with a whole lot since most of our networks now are going to run DHCP. So then when I go from one network to another, as long as they both use DHCP, I'm just fine. So here's how I'm going to set that. Um, obtain if I'm going to use DHCP use the following if I'm going to specify. And always remember to double check your DNS server and DNS settings and make sure that those are set correctly as well. Okay, um, the other thing that we can do is we'll manage a lot of this from command prompt. So I'm going to open up my command prompt and I'm going to issue the command ipconfig. Now in Windows, ipconfig is going to give me my basic IP configuration. So here's my Ethernet adapter, and then some wireless LAN adapters, and here's my actual Wi-Fi adapter. And you'll see I have a link local address, my IPv4 address, my subnet mask, and my gateway. Now this doesn't give me all of my information. This is just the summary. If I want all of the information, then the command is ipconfig forward slash all. And you'll see now I have a lot more information. So for my ones that are disconnected, you pull up, come up here to my Ethernet one because that'll be the most fun. So media state, media disconnected, the description, the physical address, if DHCP is enabled, and if auto configuration is enabled. This is for IPv6. So for my one that's actually connected, it's going to give me my description my physical address, DHCP and auto configuration enabled, and since it's active, it's going to give me a lot more information. So my link local address, my IPv4 address, I'm not using IPv6, so the only thing I have here is really the link local address. Um, the IPv4 address, the subnet mask, and then when my lease was obtained and when it expires. Now on a system that's using static, this won't uh, exist. You'll just have the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, but you won't have when the lease is obtained or expires. So this tells me I obtained it actually earlier today and it's going to expire a little bit later today. My default gateway, where, uh, who my DHCP server is, in this case it's the same as my default gateway because it's my wireless internet router. So this is where I got my IP address from. And then my DNS servers. One of them is local to my ISP and the other is the generic Google one. Okay, now if, and I'm not going to actually run this, but let's say that I wanted to get rid of this IP address. That would be ipconfig forward slash release. And I don't want to hit enter on that because that's actually going to disconnect me and I'm actually using my network at the moment, so I don't want to drop it. But I can pconfig release will release all of your IP address uh, leases. So 
bypass this, just get me out of it. IP config renew then will renew an IP address. Now I can run the renew without doing the release, but if I really want to make sure that my DHCP server is working correctly and I am getting a valid IP address, then I will release and I will renew the address. Now, another thing to be aware of with the IP config is we can also use the IP config to view our DNS, uh, cache DNS information. So I'm going to do IP config forward slash display DNS. And you're going to see a whole bunch of things because, you know, I've been active lately. Let me pipe that through more, and that'll break it up a page at a time. So you'll see we have the name of the device, the record line, record type, time to live, how long it'll last, and the pointer record. Well, this one's a pointer record. Here's a host record, the results to this IP address. And all of these are going to be... Uh, addresses that I have connected to relatively recently because things that are cached in DNS only stay for about 15 minutes or so. So here are all of them. It's broken down. You see here is Digicert and PHICDN.net. Uh, so I've got a bunch of things from there. So you'll see all of these connected, dns.google.com. So this is going to be all of my active records. Now, if I want to get rid of them, so let's say I think there's something wrong, I've got some incorrect cached information, or I want to get rid of the cache so I can verify my, that my DNS server is working, then the command is ipconfig forward slash flush DNS. This one I'll go ahead and hit enter on. So it flushes resolve our cache, and now when I display DNS, You'll see I have quite a few less things. I only have three of them in here at the moment. And all of them are for david.dalton.local. Um, which now that I think about that is actually from an old system and I can pro or an old class and I can probably get rid of it. So <clears throat> we'll manage uh, IP addresses both from here and from the uh, command prompt using ipconfig. Now, you can also manage IP addresses using the netsh uh, command and using PowerShell. Those are things that we'll talk about a little bit more when we're focusing more on Windows material and not on Cisco material. So at this point, this is the way that most of the time, unless we're doing it through scripts or something like that, most of the time when we're managing and troubleshooting uh, IP information on a Windows host, we're going to do it using the uh, uh, Network and Sharing Center or the Network and Internet Settings and the IP config command.